you need to finish at 12 because we've got to give the keys back. And I was going, oh, please, please, can we just, can we just try? And it moved just a little like, whoop. And we were all like, whoa, that's amazing. So she went away and we tried a bit more and it were tiny little movements, nothing much, just like an inch. And then she came back and she was like, right, that's it. We're done. We're done. And as she came in and said that, the table moved about three foot like. And I felt like I'd won the lottery. I was just, oh, my God. And because we had also had an observer at the door, you know, waiting for us to finish. And she saw us walk with this table. We've got response. And it moved towards the wall. Hello and welcome to episode 45 of Your Ghost Stories. Today, I'm joined by a 21st century friendly green witch. She is the host of the magical show, The Bell Witch Podcast, and is a very proud northerner. On that note, I'd like to introduce Emma to the show. Your Ghost Stories. Your Ghost Stories. Hey, Doc. Now then, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you here uh please feel free to let us know a little bit about yourself and elaborate on anything that i might have missed from your introduction okay well i'm a bit nervous because this is the first time i've done an interview on somebody else's podcast so it's nice to be at the other end of the mic um i started the bell witch podcast about a year ago with a friend who did 10 episodes with me and then dropped out and it was me on my own and it was all about witching with children in like the 21st century and how you get witchcraft into your daily busy life, you know, like on school runs and camping with kids. And then the more I did, the more apparent it became that it was just so much bigger than just witching with kids. And also I was really mindful that I was excluding quite a lot of people by saying it's witching with kids. So it naturally evolved into just honest, authentic witching or doing what you can you know not feeling bad about it and not you know seeing the instagram and facebook perfect witching and being like oh i'm not doing it right i'm not doing it right it's not perfect it's like nothing's perfect and as, as long as you're doing it with good intention then that is as good as the perfect instagram witching that you see every day what do your kids think about their mum being a witch oh they love it my little one loves it um my older one isn't so into it at the moment. I mean, she's quite mystical for an eight-year-old, as they are. And I think she did a show and tell with some crystals. And I said to her, did you tell them that your mum were a witch? And she was like, no. Like, what? <laughs> I can't believe you didn't tell them. And my little one who's five goes around going like, my mum is a witch. You know, like room on the broom. My mum is a witch. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I've heard of a white witch before, but what does being a green witch entail? So like white witch is quite... Um, I would say like, oh, that's my kid. You'll have to edit that out. Should have put a sleeping spell on her. I should have. I thought there'd be a baby now. Yeah, so the term white witch is quite dated, like from the 90s. It's not really, I would never call myself a white witch, but that's like, it's all about the magic you do. So because Wiccan is, I suppose is a white witch because you'd use your magic for good. So you wouldn't be hexing or anything. Whereas a green witch is more like, um, a witch who does stuff with the earth and herbs and grows plants and uses all the paganism aspects of the, li the life we lead. Um, and like elemental magic's quite, quite deep and it's massive, really. So I say I'm a green witch just because I'm really good at growing stuff like indoor and outdoor. And my house is covered in plants and my magic is very earth based. So I use flowers and dirt from the garden you know rather than buy stuff off the shelf if I can help it I mean of course there is a need for that and no shade to those who do because we do what we can do and we get things where we can get them but I would say yeah earth-based paganism and witching is a green witch. I love that even even without the concept of being a witch just you know being self-sufficient and 
growing your own herbs and vegetables. Uh, I think that's the way forward because sadly, to this day and age, you know, you go to the supermarket and everything's just been tampered with, you know, GMOs and everything like that. So, exactly. And yeah, yeah. I, I get really conscious about what I'm putting into my body. You know, we've got, I've got a kid as well and, you know, what we're feeding her and stuff. So yeah, it, mm-hmm. even without, like I say, without the witch aspect of it, it's just a nice thing to do for, for yourself, for your family and for the environment. And how magic is it you get a seed and you plant it with intention to grow something to feed your family that in itself is just absolutely magic i I just love it yeah and that's kind of like the the definition of life itself really or you know everything is starts kind of as a seed even you know before we started this podcast it was a seed that was planted in our minds and and grew and became what they are today yeah yeah And, and like you say i think when you have kids makes you more aware of things because you're doing you're making decisions for somebody else and that makes you more accountable and more aware of what is going on in the world and the term pagan just means somebody who cares about the earth you don't have to be a witch to be a pagan or the other way around you can be a pagan and not be a witch you recycle or you've got an allotment or you you know divide stuff at the tip or you buy ethical products all them things mean you're a pagan where did this journey begin for you? Was it at an early age? or I've always been spooky and I've always been weird because my mum was psychic and I've done a whole episode on that about growing up with a psychic mum and the ghosts and stuff. And then I was a goth when I was a teenager, but I didn't make that connection of being a witch, which just astounds me. It astounds me that I didn't make it. Um, and then having children. So it was like I drifted around my life for 10 years, not knowing what to do with myself had a child and that just awoken something in my soul, really spiritual, the mindfulness. And the people you hang out with as well, I would mean a lot of people like me who were craving community and looking at stuff a different way, you know, like not mainstream. Um, and then one of my friends was doing a subscription box and one of the themes that I got was witch. And in this box was like a mini cauldron and some candles and some herbs and this book called Witch, which I read from start to finish and was just like, oh my God, this is, this is who I am. Oh my God. I mean, now it's a terrible book. I mean, I'd never read it again, but at the time it was a great stepping stone. And then, yeah, I just started discovering stuff, discovered my mentor who runs a witch school in Leeds that was beginning that summer as I'd just made the conscious decision and it was just like all these things are lining and then once I started I just couldn't stop and it just took over absolutely everything that I do and it's a massive part of my life now. It does seem nowadays there is less stigma attached to the term witch. I think me as a 30 year old guy growing up the thought of a witch would be you know a haggard old lady on a broomstick with warts on her face and a black cat but uh, as as I've grown older, you know, I I, I know so many mm-hmm. people that have dabbled or you know are quite are quite heavily into it, into witchcraft and stuff. And yeah, it's it's, it's to, to a lot of people probably now still it is probably a very strange concept. But um, yeah, there's, there's you know no negative connotations or anything attached to it. I think you know each to their own. And if you've found a path that just makes you happy and makes you know puts life in you, then that's great. How how do you de- define modern witchcraft and how does that differ from, say, traditional practices? I think it's a lot more intuition-led and there's less rules that constrict you. There's a lot of witches who work alone just because of life and jobs and stuff, solitary witches, and they kind of make their own rules up because their rules work for them. And it always goes down to your what you want to get from magic, like your... Um, intent that's it yeah it's it's all about the intent of your actions so you know magic and witchcraft is no different so there is still covens that exist that follow their own traditions like gardenarian and alexandrian and dianic and all that kind of wicker which i am not interested in joining because i am having so much fun the knowing the people that I know and doing the things I love to do. And I'm open to learning, but I'm not quite wanting to be constricted into a coven and rules and regulations. And there is those that will argue, well, you're not doing it right. If you're not in a coven, you're not following rules and you haven't done tests and 
you can't call yourself this and you can't call yourself that. And I go, well, yeah, in your, in your views and in your religion, in my religion, my, my, you know, respect for the earth is huge. And I, I follow my gut. And if I do something that makes me go like, ooh, I won't do it again, you know, and I'll be held accountable. And I think all these things just add up to a really great witching. <laughs> so if you pulled to it, totally follow it. Read all the books. Go to the library. I am such a library lover. Why buy a book when you can get it for free? And it's like shopping. You can order them, and borrow them, and it's free. <laughs> Support your library. <laughs> Would I be correct in saying there is also a dark side to witchcraft? Could you talk a little bit about the difference between the you know the good side and the the darker or more evil side? It's like anything; people can use it for good or use it for bad. There are people out there who do witchcraft and have no qualms about throwing a hex or putting somebody in a box with some nails and some wee and like you know shaking it and then putting it in the freezer and stuff like that. Causing harm, if you're wanting to cause harm, you've got to be willing to live with the outcome. And I'm, I can't, I couldn't live my life like that. So, you know, some people pay people to, to do a negative spell thinking, oh, that's all right, because I've passed the book. I'm not, I'm not physically doing the spell, so I'm safe. And I disagree because you start the spark of intent. So there's a lot of karma belief in my lifestyle too. You know, like what you send out, it will get back to you. And like the power of manifesting and stuff, it's all about the vibe that you ride on in life. And if you ride on a negative vibe where you don't really give a shit what happens to people, then how how can you love yourself? And also knowing it's going to come back to you, because it will. <laughs> it's just not worth the risk. <laughs> on that note, can you share any experiences where witchcraft has positively impacted your personal growth or your well-being? God, it's massive since I became a witch. I'm just so happy. I've never been as happy in my life. There's been so much movement in the past eight years since my first daughter was born. Um, I was so I was really depressed as a young person, as like a teenager, and all throughout my twenties, I was in and out of depression, and I had loads of counselling, and I was very rarely happy. And then I started doing witchcraft and just doing tiny little spells, and my uh, magic of choice is sigils so I'm really good at sigils in fact I'd got I'm shit hot at sigils that's like my strongest magic so that's like a symbol you create a bit like a rune stone um and you give it an intention but you can do stuff with it you can write it on your skin you can tattoo it you can put it in soil you could write stir it in your tea you can put it on mirrors and steamy windows and it'll represent i tend to do a lot of jars with them or uh, people pay me to make them because they're that good i mean i sold somebody's house in about three weeks after they got a sigil off me somebody had a perfect birth home birth after a traumatic event previously and she always says a lot of that is because of this sigil i made and i'm just like oh it's so lovely i've helped i don't believe it's all me of course not but i just kind of like nudge the universe a little bit to be like look at this sigil this has got power take notice of it and uh yeah so i do a lot of sigils and i've got some tattooed on my arm and the first ever one i did was for growth um and i did it in a moon circle and i wrote it on bread that we'd made with food ink and then ate it so it's like we physically ate the sigil and i remember being just so into it and being like whoa this magic is amazing and then after that i'm honestly I honestly believe my growth started and I started becoming more aware and more questioning of what I've been brought up with. And, you know, like, like you say, we grew up with grot bags. That was the witch we do when we were young. Do you remember grot yeah, bags? So I'm a bit older than you. <laughs> I'm like, I've got nearly a decade on you. <laughs> um, so there's a lot, lot of unpacking and understanding myself and also just being all right. You know, like if people don't like me, that's all right. If somebody's gossiping about me, then just let them, just let them trust the universe. It'll come back to them. You don't have to do anything. And that was a massive growth for me, just being more like, why does it matter all this stuff we're being taught? Why do you have to be popular? Why does everybody have to like you? You don't even like everybody. If you were everybody's cup of tea, you'd be a mug. <laughs> 
that's a very heartwarming answer and i'm so happy for you that you've found your path in life uh, as someone you know i've struggled a lot with depression and anxiety and stuff over the years and you know things have got a hell of a lot better in recent years but yeah you know like everyone they still have their off days so when you found that one thing that you can you know you just know makes you makes your bones happy then yes stick at that yeah if anything no matter what people's beliefs are listening to this just the positivity the positivity that you're spreading can only be a good thing um i think there's a lot of power when you have good or positive intentions and you put that into action you touched on this briefly but how do you handle skepticism or criticism from those who may not understand or accept your beliefs it is hard because a lot of people just outright say you're a devil worshiper and they don't want to know really i mean for a start there's no devil in the craft and i don't know why that keeps coming up i'll go to nightclubs you know with my pentacle on because that protects me and the door man will be like are you a witch you know prove it do magic right now and it's just like it don't work like that it's all about being patient and trusting the process i can't just like go poof here's a bars of flowers you know it's not that kind of magic i mean all you could do is tell people and accept that you might not change their mind and if they're not meant to know it then you won't change their mind and be all right with that again you know i don't have to prove myself to anybody i know that people who need to hear what i'm saying will find me and listen and it's not my job to pull people in and, and convert them you know like all the religious religions do <laughs> it'll find you if you're open to it it'll find you and then when you find it you know you naturally progress to knowing other people who are into it and it becomes a really beautiful community of like-minded souls uh, I'm, I'm so here for it but yeah Loads of people don't get witchcraft. You know, people actively stand there with signs saying like, you know, burn the witch and God loves you and the devil's in your heart. And it's just like, mate, you don't know what you're talking about. We are just so nice. <laughs> just going out going like, oh, that's a nice leaf. You know, like that meme. Oh, that's a nice leaf. <laughs> You've made me uh, want to become a witch now. So what are male witches called? Wizards? Is that right? Or No, no. <laughs> No, they're witches too, okay. and there's plenty of them. There is, there's loads of, of men witches. So funny, people ask me that all the time. So am I a wizard? And I go, well, if you want, I mean. You're a wizard, Harry. <laughs> very, very similar. I think wizards are more fictional, aren't they? But yeah, there is, there is men witch, witches. What advice would you give to somebody that's interested in exploring witchcraft? I would say don't rush it. Read all the books. Get, listen to all the podcasts find literature everywhere maybe join like um witch fest communities or like pagans of the north is another good one and yeah books mainly look at the seasons and collect stuff and then wonder why you've collected it you know like we all collect shells from the sea we all have random twigs and feathers like why do you have them things maybe look into what a crow means you know like in folklore look for patterns in in your life that you go like, oh, I heard this the other day and it's there again. Why Why is that? You know, it's all about finding meaning in the stuff that comes to you. It's kind of like dividing, like divination through just noticing patterns in your life. Celebrate the seasons, uh, study the wheel of the year, go to events, go to pagan events. Camps are amazing. Pagan camps are so welcoming and it's all about rituals coming together just having fun, you know, you're not going to be sort of told off for doing it wrong because a lot of new people come and that's how they get into them. I mean, that's how I started as well, doing camping, which is why the Bell Witch is called that because I camped in a bell tent. Uh, yeah, just and I'd say as well, magic is probably, do, physically doing magic is probably your last thing, you know, understanding everything else first and ritual and doing altars and seeing people and going to moots your local moots where people witches come together and do talks about different aspects of different witchcrafts because there's so many it's massive do all that make notes do a book of shadows kind of like a diary just about magic and yeah just see what patterns you can you can see 
do magic right at the end and do it only do it for yourself i would say don't do it for anybody else because if something goes wrong <laughs> you're gonna have to fix it or <laughs> learn from it i've i very rarely do magic for for um I pretty rarely do magic, actually. I don't do it as much as I'd like to do it. Because I think part of it is being happy with what you've got, you know, like not just doing it for the sake of it. I mean, I'll do, I do sigils, but in terms of me physically wanting to manifest something, I haven't done that for such a long time now. It's more about altar work for me and thanking the seasons and learning about deity and the tarot and the oracle and stuff. It's interesting to hear you talk about that. For me personally, I've explored a lot of, you know, the laws of the universe. And for me, that in particular had a huge positive impact on my life. You know, I was heading in in the wrong direction, doing things I definitely shouldn't be doing. And yeah, since I found, so cringy as it might be, but the book The Secret, which I'm sure you've heard. <laughs> oh yeah. Everybody's read that. It's the right. Yeah, it's, it's where they all start, right? <laughs> and um so yeah, I, I got into that, read the book, and it was just like something just clicked inside me. And yeah, it sounds like what you're talking about, it sounds like there is some crossover in this field alongside, mm -hmm. you know, the laws of the universe and witchcraft. Uh, things like synchronicities and the law of attraction what you give out you get back and yeah manifestation and everything like that uh would you would you say that's the case yeah yeah there's loads of overlap even with i always think with quantum physics as well a tiny bit of that overlaps and then when you start looking into it it's just it'll blow your mind it it all works together like a really well oiled machine but yeah, definitely, we all have the ability to get what we want. And some people argue that the things that happen to us are negative, we bring on, which I'm kind of like on the fence about that because I'm like, you can't, surely not everything bad is because you brought it to yourself. Like, I can't get on board with that, but a lot of it probably is. For me personally, a lot of it was absolutely because I was always so woe is me. So more woe is me came to me. So that changed it. I mean, just... Recently, I did one. Did you hear it about the splash when I was jogging? Um, a car went past me and I was jogging and I got absolutely covered and it went everywhere. And I was so cross, so, so cross. And at the more time went around, I was a bit like, I need to let this go now because he probably don't even know he did it. You know, 10 years ago or, or more, I would have held on to it and I would have stewed about it all day and all week. And it would just affect my life. Because I'd never let go, I'd notice other bad stuff happening to me too. And it really is that simple. It is a practice you've got to get into changing your mindset. It's no easy task and people get sad and that's okay. But just don't keep hold of the sadness. Let stuff make you smile, you know, like if you have an argument and your partner makes a joke, you know, like give him it. Be like, okay, that's quite funny. I'll let you have that. And I do that quite a lot with, <laughs> in my relationship. <laughs> just be allowed to let things go be pissed off for a tiny little time and then focus on the good stuff i think those are incredibly wise words and sadly the the world we live in so many people are just mm -hmm. stuck in that negative vibration and then they're, they're not even aware of it which yeah. is so sad um i'm sure you know people in your life i certainly know people in my life uh that that could do with you know just understanding what you've just said and just you know don't like they say don't sweat the small stuff right yeah totally and, and i get it i used to be there in fact over there yeah, for same. years don't i mean i know it's hard to get out of yeah, it I've, I've kind of been in that mindset most of my life to be honest and it's only in the last maybe five years that i've understood that thinking that way can it really does have such a negative impact on your life and even not not just your life other people around you as well so Emma, this show, as you know, is called Your Ghost Stories. So to finish off the show, I have to ask, have you had many paranormal encounters throughout your life? And if so, I'd totally love to hear your stories. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> How long you got? Um, <laughs> I wrote a list. I don't know if you want the whole list. Um, some of it will be already on one of my episodes, but there's just so good stories, so I thought I'd tell you them. So growing up with a psychic mum, there were loads of bumps and she always spoke to spirit. 
you know, there'd be things like doors would just open repeatedly, like close it, it open. And we used to have them old fashioned glass doors in the house where I grew up. And many a time you'd just like, you know, catch a shadow going by. But I mean, like I've only just thought about this recently, you know, when you forget some of it and then when you sit down and think, it's like, oh shit, yeah, there's loads of stuff. Um, some of it's, Will be my imagination, of course it will, but some of it has got to have been because it was such a big deal for my mum. She was a fantastic medium and she used to read tarot and oracle. We'd go on the bus somewhere and she'd meet somebody, just tell them that her life story and who had died and who was with them and scare them to death. And then they'd be like, ah! <laughs> um, there was this, we had this painting in my mum's house that she bought. I've no idea where it came from. And one day a face appeared in the top right corner and I was so young, I was really frightened. And I remember it became like a thing where people would come to the house to see this painting with a face in the top corner. And I, I remember somebody turned it light off and going like, oh, it glows. I mean, I never saw that, but I remember hearing it going like, oh. Um, and it went next to the, it was on top of the lantern and my door was to the left of it. And I remember doing a 007, you know, like round the door frame so it didn't see me. And I was getting so scared. I couldn't even go to the toilet and start weeing myself and all sorts. And in the end, she had to get rid of it. And I don't know what she did with it. I mean, if she'd have kept it, it probably would have been worth quite a lot of money. She just went one day and I said, where's this painting gone? And she said, oh, I got rid of it because she was so frightened. I was a bit like, thanks, mum. <laughs> and it, it's like I can't believe I just thought about that until recently and I'd forgot to put it in my podcast episode and be like ah but anyway it's good for this one there was this one time when I was d dusting my tv in my room and I heard the downstairs door open and I heard footprint footsteps coming up steps you know like running up like coming to see me and it sounded like my mum so I didn't turn around I just went your your mum or whatever I was doing and then she took my jumper twice at the back, just like one, two. And I turned around and there was nobody there. Oh my God. I remember being like, oh, that's a bit weird. And, but then I did dwell on it. I must have just carried on with my life. And then sometime later, I was thinking it's weird because I didn't see the reflection in the TV, which I was dusting. And then after that, I was a bit like, oh, that's actually really scary. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I did hear her come up the stairs and I was so sure it was her. I guess most kids would be scared out of their minds having some of the experience that, you know, you've spoken about just now. But having a mum so yeah. deep into spirituality, did that make things a little bit easier for you to understand? It did eventually. When I was young, I was really frightened before my nan died because it was just so commonplace. You know, and you'd hear, I'd always like eavesdrop when she was talking to people because people used to come to the house for tarot cards and readings and ghosty nights and stuff. And I'd hear them say stuff and just be like, shame yourself upstairs on top step and should be in beds and they'd be hearing what she, what she was saying to them. I remember this one time when I started realising, okay, spirit. She never called them ghosts. She always called them spirit. It was always spirit. Ghosts to her were just like Scooby-Doo. Um, but I remember being in bed and my feet were freezing cold and I just could not get a warm for my life. I had about 20 socks on and two blankets and a pillow over them. And, and I said out loud almost for a laugh, like, if this is a spirit, can you warm my feet up? And instantly my feet got really, really hot, like fire hot. And I remember freaking out, taking all socks off, you know, like ripping all bed covers off and being like, oh, what? <laughs> it was it was so the heat was just like ouch heat you know it was bad i'd keep that spirit um, alongside me my whole life whenever i get cold I'll, mate sort I us know, out. <laughs> it only happened it's like that a, once it's like a hot but... water bottle on tap <laughs> god it was it was so so hot um um and then there's the what else is the that recently, because I'm really interested in ghosts, as you might be able to tell, because I listen to all these ghost podcasts, um, and me and my friend and a bunch of others are setting up a ghost hunting business called Grave Encounters. Cool. Uh, and I said I'd mention this as a little plug for us in Leeds. So we're going to do like authentic down-to-earth ghost hunts in pubs and stuff. No, nothing 
theatrical or bells and whistles. Like, I just want a ghost hunt. I'm not really bothered about making money. I just want to do it. And I can't afford to do it with other people, so I'm going to do it myself. And the, we did one in January, just after New Year. And all night I was getting bits and bobs because I'm a tiny bit psychic and I get random thoughts and I think that's spirit speaking to me. But at the end of the night, we did table tipping and I could feel if we just spent time with this table, we could get it moving. And the rest of the party left and there were me and a mother-daughter duo with his fingertips on this table. And I could feel it like trembling, you know, and it was a different kind of movement. Like I've never felt anything like that in my life. And we were talking to her, you know, if the spirit's here, will you move this table for us? You know, we're just free, free women. We can't do it on a zone. You know, we need all the help we can get. And we had one of them ghost boxes in the middle, you know, that says a word randomly from the radio and it was saying names. So we were talking to the names. I think one was Jason. Like, Jason, if you can help us move this table, it'd be amazing. And the, it was nearly 12 and it finished at 12 and the people who were running it came up to us and said, you need to finish at 12 because we've got to give the keys back. And I was going, oh, please, please, can we just can we just try? And it moved just a little like, whoop. And we were all like, whoa, that's amazing. So she went away and we tried a bit more and it were tiny little movements, nothing much, just like an inch. And then she came back and she was like, right, that's it. We're done. We're done. And as she came in and said that, the table moved about three foot like, mm and I felt like I'd won the lottery I was just oh my god and because we had also had an observer at the door you know waiting for us to finish and she saw us walk with this table we've got response and it moved towards the wall and that was like the best ever experience Hmm. I've ever had (laughs) yeah you sound so lucky to be able to see that and I'm sure the person the observer at the door probably never offered to lock up the building ever again yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) it was just fantastic and then that were like okay we need to do this we need to set up a ghost hunting thing just to do this again because that confirmed so much for me that night and and i've always i mean when you believe in ghosts it's a bit like a pendulum you know like i absolutely believe and then you'll hear something else and go no no bollocks or box and then you'll go no no but what about this what about that what about this and i think that's really natural in like the paranormal world of you know like team skeptic you disbeliever you know team believer but yet that was fantastic sounds amazing if you ever do any investigations uh, closer down south please do let me know i'd love to come and join in yeah i will do yeah you, you never know we might we might be really good at it and expand and everything who knows what the <laughs> universe is going to bring me i'm absolutely trusted because i've no idea what i'm doing <laughs> you know i've got a spirit board and a pendulum and all that jazz all the typical witch kit i'm just going to turn up my authentic self and just try my best i love it emma it's been so amazing to have you on and we'll definitely have to do it again sometime sounds like you've got a few more stories to tell your ghost story your ghost story just to finish up where can uh, some of my listeners come and find you and your podcast so I am the Bell Witch Podcast. I'm absolutely everywhere. I work really hard to get on all the streaming stuff. So whenever you listen, I will most likely be there. Apple, Spotify, and all the little ones, Podfinder, and Bean, and whatever else there is. And I'm also on Instagram, the Bell Witch Podcast, separated by underscores, each word. I'm very active on there. And I've got Facebook and all that, but I'm not as into that as Instagram. And yeah, I, I love talking about ghosts or spooky stuff or anything witchy. I'm right, chatty. I'm always looking for people to come on my show, <laughs> stealing your audience. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're all about sharing the podcast in love, aren't we? It's such a lovely group of podcasts we've got going at the moment. Absolutely. The best community I've, I've ever been part of. Yeah. Everyone that I've chatted to has just been so great. And yeah, it's just, it's great fun. Uh, but yeah, anyone listening, I'm going to put a link in the description of this so you can go and find uh, the Bell Witch podcast and find some more of Emma's stuff from there. But yeah, it's been so great to have you on and it's been a pleasure to meet you as well. Thank you so much, Jamie. I've had loads of fun. <laughs> All the best. Cheers. Ooh. Welcome to the Bell Witch podcast. A show that covers the infamous legend of the historic 
bell witch haunting in southern United States in the 19th century, where the Bell family experienced frightening happenings within their home. Hang on a second. No, 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 that's the wrong Bell witch. This is a podcast about being a witchy pagan in the 21st century, airing bi-weekly with different guests on each month sharing their pearls of wisdom and gems of knowledge from their very own witchy businesses. I call it a moot loot. Here we cover a wide range of pagan and witchcraft related topics from sigils, spells and spirits to reiki rituals and pagan parenting while camping in the bell tent named Delilah. It's got nothing to do with the bell witch from the 19th century in Tennessee that scared people to death in a little townhouse, which may or may not be true. Pretty cool story, but yeah, it's the wrong bell witch. This bell witch podcast is brought to you by Swales, the friendly green witch from Leeds, UK. A northern witch with a strong Yorkshire accent, a love of all things weird, spooky, magical, and a smelly dragon named Dave. So tune in every two weeks for a sprinkling of Yorkshire magic. Listen to the Bell Witch podcast with me, Swales, a friendly green witch, wherever you get your podcasts.